This is the tale of a guy who refused to drown in the sea that is Verizon's bullshit customer service. DC guy was finally able to get the DSL service price he saw online. I hopes quickly builds as his service ready days arrive with the technician at his front door. But little did DC guy know that he will soon be heading back into the water for another swim, as the stupidity of Horizon will come at him at full force. Who the hell do they think they are? The guy came to my house on Monday morning. You know, pretty much thinking that it was going to be a simple him just coming into my house, put the phone line in, and then from there, my service will work. Because I already did all the pre-installation stuff on my end on my computer. I don't need him to tell me how to do that stuff. As he already told me, he, was gonna, he wasn't going to fix my computer anyway. So if I didn't know how to do that type of crap, I'm screwed on that. Even he checked the line and he put in this device to check the phone. He told me something odd. He told me that there was a, a phone number in, in my household. I'm like, what? Not really kind of surprised by the fact that I have a phone line. I don't have a phone line in my house. I have a cell phone, and, I, and if I want to make phone calls, I use Magic Jack. I was like, well, he said, if anything, I have to make sure I get rid of that phone line in my household, or else I'll get charged for it. I was like, okay, it shouldn't be a problem, you know, since I didn't, it's not in, since it wasn't registering my name in the first place. He came, he went, and sure enough, I tried to install my service, you know, by hooking up the modem to the line. Sure enough, it kept bringing green. I was like, wait a minute, is this shit working? And it wasn't. It wasn't detecting any signal. I was like, this guy didn't do his job. So I said, and I thought about it, I said, maybe it could be the fact that maybe what he was saying about that number might be the issue. So I decided on testing the phone line to see if I actually would get a dial tone. And you know what? Sure enough, I did. I was like, wait a minute. So I got a, I had a free phone line in my house all this time that I could have been using. And pretty much I got out the phone, put it in the jack, actually made a call. I called my mother. I called a couple of people. I couldn't call long distance. And so then I decided on maybe I should check to see if I can phone look up the number on the internet. And sure enough, the phone comes up as a business a business nine somewhere in downtown DC. I was like, really? I say, but well, regardless of the fact, I can't use my internet service, and if, this might be causing a conflict of some sorts, because the C number he gave me for my DSL number, the first three digit is this this phone number. I decided to call Verizon anyway to let them know that yeah, they need to get the um line off my off my phone. Of course, they told me, hey, since it's not my account, they can't. Get rid of the line. Fair enough, but I don't want to cancel the account outright because it's not my phone account to begin with. I needed a roof from my phone. And from the basis of that, start the longest 10 hours of my life. From there, I was transferred over when I explained the situation. I was transferred over. And this, by the way, I should, I should mention that Verizon technicians, or maybe in my case, the guy didn't even give me no type of invoice whatsoever, any type of thing to sign to say he was here in my house. Whereas, at least for Comcast, when they come out, they do those type of things. I was then transferred over to customer service about this. Customer service transferred me over to web help. Web help said that my, my issue is not the phone line, it's, it's my DSL service. Then I was transferred again to customer service. I did not demand the customer service, which coincidentally it sounded like the same guy that I was dealing with for, um, for when I was trying to get the service. I told them that, you know, I don't think that your, the people who have this account would like to know that there's a, um, a vulnerability on my end for me to work up long distance phone calls or calls 
of any variety on on their service. I told him, you know, I will definitely call them. You know, I was being nice because I didn't be in a sarcastic tone. He was like, goodbye, and I just hung up. From there, let's say this is hour four. I was getting really tired, so I had my friend say, you want to deal with these people? Okay, because he's more of a you know, charismatic type of guy. He can probably talk to them better than I could. So from there, he was on the phone. He finally got somebody to actually said, one of the web technicians say, yes, it will definitely be the phone line. They need to remove it. But they weren't. But they, for one thing I know about Verizon, they don't keep up any log of whatsoever to what type of issue the customer is having. So if I transfer with an issue for one department, I have to tell the, per the new person the very same issue like I've got to finish telling. Because at this point, I'm being told that an unauthorized phone count is on my it's in my household, it needs to be removed. So the simple thing to that should be what? Get a get a technician to come out to my house and fix it? Oh no, they couldn't do that. They told my friend that I don't have a since I don't have a phone account, they can't send somebody to my house to do it. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? What they told my friend what I should do is I should call the company up and tell them my situation so they can take out the directory on their end. Why do I have to call them to tell them there's a problem with their with the phone line based on Verizon end? Verizon should be the one who says I'm paying them for a service in general for them to call them up and tell them or get it fixed. But nope, they couldn't do that. Again, meanwhile, my friend, you know, again, again, Different customer people service on the line. One person said, "Hey, I need this. Fax them a copy of my rental lease to prove I live here." I'm like, "What? Why do I have to do that?" I'm saying, "Why do I? I have to take that money out of my pocket to prove to them? I don't mind at worst having to go down to the local office to do that, but they didn't need all that when I wanted to establish the service. Fine, you know, whatever. But sure enough." I should also mention this whole time while I'm doing this, I mean, make, I was making these phone calls. I was using this very same phone line f for, f that not I shouldn't have in my house in the first place to prove to them that hey, because they couldn't be because some of them couldn't believe that what I was saying to them was truthful or not. I say, ma'am, I'm calling you at this number right now. If you check your caller ID, this number, as you guys can see on your own account, I don't have access to. So, how am I making this call if, if I don't have access to this number? But again, none of them could tell me that. Then with the next situation with that with my friend, he, he accidentally hung up on them. So, I was like, yeah, back to square one. You know, at this point, I was like saying, the hell with the service then. Because I just didn't want to be bothered. I say maybe I should try again, try to, um, try to voice chat once again for my service to see where or not I need to. Where right now I can go through that avenue again and where right now that will be able to help me. But sure enough, when I put in my account information, voice chat started up. As soon as I entered the chat room, I got disconnected. Like, wow, I'm a customer now, aren't I? So at this point, I tried again by saying, okay, I'm just going to cancel the service all right because I'm not going to keep a service I can't even use. Now I said, now it's a whole day with him. You getting my service activated? I'm getting emails from them saying, "Hey, my service is ready. Use it and everything." And I can't even use my service. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do? But what? But what happened next was the guy said, "Okay, um, you'll transfer me to um super customer service or some bullshit thing like that." I'm on the phone with this woman. She has the nerve to tell me because I'm using a magic jack, which is that's a broadband voiceover program for when you want to make calls. Which, which I should say, my setup at the time was when I, I was using to get on the internet was was a wireless connection in my area. So, which is in no way connected to any phone jack in my phone. She swore on her life that because I have the magic jack hooked up to my wall jack, that's interfering. Even when I have my internet connection, 
my wireless internet connection. Of course, I took off the adapter and I even un uninstalled it. Just in case there be any conflicts, just to make sure I have everything clean installed. So when I do, when I do set up my broadband service, I can re do that and then set up my wireless connect connection in my house. But again, I tell her, magic jack, which is this phone jack. This part is connected to my computer, my USB port, right? Anyone who knows this type of thing will know how, how it goes, right? But no, I don't know what I'm talking about. Lady, just send somebody to my house. That's all I need you to do. I was like, I'm not, because I'll read about this, you know, get serious. I'm about to get really serious back on these people. Saying at this point, I was like, okay, I'm going to look online, you know. How can I get them to do what I want?